Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to take a quick look at flip fluids. And the purpose of the tutorial is not to give a complete introduction to flip fluids, but to simply look at some of the things that have changed between Houdini 11 and Houdini 12. If you want to have a basic introduction to flip fluids, uh, then there is a tutorial on the SideFX website. And here's the website. And if we look under Learning Tutorials, uh, and then under master classes uh, you'll see that somewhere in here and obviously this this will change as more master classes are added but there's an introduction to flip fluids it's based on houdini 11 but almost all of it still applies for houdini 12. well let's have a look at some of the things that don't apply anymore well in fact let's start by looking at something that hasn't changed uh, so let me just set up a simple scene. So let, lay down a ground plane, a rigid body ground plane, lay down a sphere, move it up a little bit, and then go to the particle fluid shelf. And there's a tool here called Flip Fluid from Object. So with my sphere selected, I'm going to click that, and it's going to convert my object here into a fluid. And if we have a look at our sphere, uh, it's not done anything to that sphere, it's still the same sphere as before, press play, this is going to fall down, crash into the floor. Very good. So how is this being sourced? How is the fluid being sourced? Well, if we have a look down at the auto network, press L to lay this out. This is being sourced here in the flip fluid object. And if we have a look down here, we've got a tab called initial data which is picking up the surface SOP and that's the sphere and that's what it's creating the particles from to form the fluid. So it's scattering particles in the volume divided, defined by the sphere and using that as the fluid. So that's the same as Houdini 11. What, uh, what's changed in Houdini 12? Well the thing that's changed, and let me set up a new scene Same as before, but in this case, let's use the Emit Particle Fluid tool. So let me, with my sphere selected, select that. And it invites me to select a fluid or fluid box. And the reason it's doing that is to allow me to add more than one source to a fluid simulation. Now in this case, of course, I don't have an existing fluid simulation, so I'm just going to press Enter. And at a certain point, it will create my fluid. Let me make sure that we're viewing everything and we can see that this emits fluid which is being drawn down by gravity and eventually that's going to hit uh, the ground plane and, and spread out. Like so. So what's going on here? How's this being sourced? Well we've got our original sphere and then we've got this Create Surface Volume node, which is a Fluid Source node. And this is exactly the same node that's used to create sourcing for smoke. And I've done a series of videos on Smoke at 12, and those cover this node in quite a lot of detail. So I'm not going to go through all of that again, but I will highlight the particular elements that are used for creating a flip fluid. And essentially this means that we have a much more powerful method to create fluids in Houdini 12 and also one which is identical more or less to the method for creating smoke so you don't need to learn two different methods. So what's going on here? Well it's doing two things here. Let me just hide other objects. It's creating this surface and it's doing that by building an SDF volume from the sphere. And this is what we're visualizing here as an ISO surface. We could also visualize it as smoke uh, and uh, we could visualize it as a slice as well. That's the one thing it's doing. Let me send that back to ISO surface. The other thing it's doing is emitting particles. In fact, let me just change it to smoke. Uh, and we can see the particles here inside. So let me just have a quick look. And the particles 
are being created because this parameter is ticked and they're being created inside the volume called surface which is the volume that we're creating here uh, and uh, it's taking the particle separation here from it's copying the value that's in our auto dot network which is located on a flip fluid object here at the top we can see particle separation so this is where it's copying the value for the particle separation for the sourcing so it's creating those particles it's scattering them inside the volume uh, and it's using a jitter seed here so that they're slightly randomized uh, and it's using a seed which is equivalent to the time so that seed is going to change at every frame and we can see may not be able to see it very clearly on the video but that arrangement of particles is changing at every frame and that's all it's doing by default it's creating these particles and it's creating the surface so what's going on here in the auto dot network well we've got a source surface from sphere object node which is also familiar to those of you who've seen the source from volumes uh, that the smoke in Houdini 12 rather set of videos this is exactly the same node that's used for smoke but in the case of sourcing flip uh, it's just doing two things it's sourcing the volume so it's adding to the surface the surface of the emitter so our liquid surface which is one of the fields that's maintained by the flip solver that includes our source so let me play the simulation for a little bit like so uh, and let me visualize the surface which I can do here so I can turn off the visualization of particles and switch on the visualization of the surface and we can see that the surface pretty much surrounds the particles like so so at every frame uh, the volume of the emitter of the source is being added to that surface. The other thing that this is doing is adding particles. So it's taking the particles from this node defined up here, this one, and it's adding them to the flip fluid which is pointed to here. So in this case it's this flip fluid object here. We don't need to worry too much about the time offset. Uh, what happens with this is that when the particles are birthed, uh, in order to spread them out, uh, the, the node looks at their velocity and gives them a random amount of their velocity and moves them as they're born into the simulation. So they spread out even before they're entering the flip fluid solver. The other thing that it's doing is killing those particles that are inside the surface. Now what does this mean? You might think, well, since the surface encloses all of the particles, that's just going to kill everything. Uh, in fact, what it does is ensure that we don't get too great a number of particles. And it does that by looking not at the surface as we're seeing here, which is the surface after the source has been applied, but the surface as defined by the particles that are in the flip fluid simulation before we make the step of adding the additional particles here. So usually, in this simulation, for example, uh, we've got gravity at work here. We probably expect these particles in a single frame. Let me just move back to frame one. So this is the first frame, then the second frame. This has moved down imperceptibly here. So some of these, most of this space is still occupying the same space as the source. But probably at the top here, some of those particles at the very top have fallen down so that the space occupied by the initial fluid is slightly less than the space occupied by the source here at the top. So there'll be a bit of a gap there. So what this is doing is killing any particles that are emitted by the source which are inside the existing surface. So in this case, probably the particles in this area of the source would not be added to the simulation just the ones at the top here where the original particles have fallen down a bit would be added and that's important because otherwise you get this build up of particles and they'd be packed far too densely and you'd have a problem
So uh, that's uh, those are the two things that this sourcing node is doing. Well, let's have a look now at how we can affect some of the properties of our particles as we source them. Uh, and this works, by the way, equally well for the emit from uh, the, the fl fluid from object method. So let's, for example, assume that we wanted whoops that we wanted to give our particles some color. And we can just do this by having a node here. Let's add one now. And I'm going to use a point sop. You, you can use an attribute create, it's just as good. The point sop just happens to have these default attributes uh, packaged with it, if you like. So we can add a color, delete the channels, and then let's say choose a red color. And let me turn off the visualization of the surface. So we're just seeing the particles. And there they turn red. And what will happen, and let me just have a look at our details view, look at the points value. We can see that this CD attribute here, which is the color attribute, has a value of 0.9 for red. So what will happen is that in our auto.network that will be inherited by our fluid. So let's visualize our fluid. Oops. Visualize our fluid, visualize the particles again. Now we're seeing blue particles here. One of the things we can do in Houdini 12, which I think is new in Houdini 12, is we can visualize instead of these spheres or sprites, uh, we're seeing sprites at the moment, we can visualize the particles themselves. And we can see that these are blue, which is odd. And the reason they're blue is that by default, uh, the solver is adding this visualization, which allows you, for example, to visualize the speed of the particles. So if we turn this to none, uh, what we will do is we'll see those, let me revert this to the beginning, we will see the color attribute that's been inherited. And there we can see it. Like so. One of the other things that it's often good to manipulate in a source is the velocity. So let's go back into our sphere object and what we could do is add some velocity to our particles as well. So here on the particle tab we can add velocity. And let me add some velocity in the x direction, like so. And what this is going to do is create a velocity attribute with a value in the x direction. And our flip fluid is going to inherit that. So let's have a look and see what happens with this. And we can see it's now shooting off in the x direction and then falling down. There's a more sophisticated way of adding velocity. So let me just get rid of this. Well, let me just turn off the add velocity here. And the more sophisticated way is to use the capabilities of the create surface volume node itself. And there are various different ways that we can create volumes. We can, velocity volumes rather, we can create an object with a V attribute, which defines the velocity at various points. And we can use the stamp points method to create a velocity field. We can add a velocity in a single direction. So in this case, let me once again add it, say, in the X direction, like so. Uh, and we're visualizing this here. We can, we can see those arrows representing the velocity field. Uh, and so what this should do is ensure that when we look at this, we have velocity. And in some cases, there we go, it has a value of 3. Now you may say, well, it's a bit confusing because a lot of these velocity values have a value of 0. That's because these are other elements being created. These points don't belong and not, in fact, our particle system. And we can see that. Let me lay down again a 
blast node. So we can just have a look at if we do at name equals particle, that will be just our particles because let me in fact let me show you here. If we have a look at our primitives, we can see that we've got a primitive called particles which contains all of our particles. So if we go onto the blast, delete non selected. Uh, we've now got oops, particles. We've now got just our particles, which are 5,094 points instead of 15,000 points. So the particles should all have a velocity value of 3, which they do. So what's happening here is that velocity volume that we're creating, uh, that's being used to create velocity attributes on our particles, which are in turn being uh, used in the simulation. So we should see, if we now go into uh, auto.network, we should see that these go in, flies off in the, in the x direction as expected. And we could do some more sophisticated things. So let me have a look at the sphere object again. We can, example, for example, add some curl noise. Let's uh, reduce the swirl size. Let's add some scale, like so. That's going to produce quite a bit of, of noise there. So let's now have a look at our autodot network. And we should see now much more random kind of emission of this this fluid that's shooting particles off quite randomly from that initial space and creating a much more realistic kind of fluid what you might see if you if you had water flowing out of a pipe for example just flowing down like that uh, note uh, by the way uh, that this does take account of the transformations on your object your emission object so for example if I were to rotate this round, uh, we're going to find that this starts shooting up into the air because that x direction is now rotated up to here. So you can usually, if you want a sophisticated direction, you can usually set it up to be along one of the axes and then rotate your object until it's facing the right way. And of course, your uh, your um, emission emitting object can move, uh, so we can animate it. So let me animate it. Let's animate it along the x direction, maybe. Sine dollar f times two times 5 and that should mean let me just rewind this this should mean that our source is moving now of course uh, you can get into problems if your source is moving too fast and the solutions to those are exactly the same as you would use for the smoke problems with smoke emission. So in other words, you can use the motion blur capability that's in your surface creation node. Uh, in the scalar volume node here, you can use motion blur. That's explained in my earlier videos. Uh, and that's only useful if, you're, if your emitter is moving very fast.